This is Breaking News from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Sponsored by Michael Gaughan South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Renee Summerauer coming to you live from the Las Vegas Review Journal studio. We're about to take you live to a state emergency operations center where Governor Steve Sisolak is set to provide an update on the Calder fire raging around Lake Tahoe's basin. Uh, we will have some live look. As you can see right now, we're looking at the US 5395 junction, not too far from Lake Tahoe, as you can see. Now on the California side of the region, South Lake Tahoe is issued evacuation orders. Typically at this time of year, the area is filled with tourists, but it has been cleared out as the fire continues to spread. Douglas County here in Nevada is now also under evacuation warnings. Let's go ahead and take a listen. All of our residents protect structures, including homes and businesses, and our beautiful Lake Tahoe. I am impressed at the progress that's been made just in the last 24 hours since I issued a declaration of emergency. Because of the advanced planning and preparation by the Nevada Division of Emergency Management and the Nevada Division of Forestry, the Nevada Department of Transportation, and so many other state and federal agencies, the declaration allowed us to move forward quickly, including mobilizing the National Guard. I want to have a special shout out to General Barry for his assistance in making that such a smooth transition. And once again, the Guard has stepped up every single time we've asked something of them. They're the first ones to help. I've asked some of our subject matter experts to join me here today to provide additional updates and answers and questions that you might have. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to John Bockendahl, Emergency Management Program Manager for the Nevada Division of Emergency Management, to provide an update and help introduce some of our other speakers. John, thank you. So thank you. Welcome everybody to the State Emergency Operations Center. I want to thank you for coming and listening to our story. We started preparation for this over 10 days ago in coordination with California Fire, California Office of Emergency Services, as well as the IMT that was helping coordinate the fire operations. When we started that, we immediately implemented our emergency support functions and to coordinate advanced planning for the evacuation efforts and for backup fire resources to this region because they've been stripped over the last couple of months with all of the fires that have happened on the California and Nevada Forestry Service. So over the last week, NDOT has developed and formulated a plan that's been released and was utilized yesterday for the successful evacuation of the California side of the South Lake Tahoe community. And we're hoping to continue to use that plan to move forward as we look into the potential actions on the Nevada side as the fire moves. We also spent a lot of time in the last week coordinating with the American Red Cross in the efforts of opening up evacuation shelters in Douglas County, Carson City, and Washoe County, three of which are currently completely full at capacity, and more are being opened up, including a large shelter in Washoe County. We have a number of fire resources that have come in to backfill the Sierra Front region here because their resources are on the fire. So we have Clark County has sent up a task force consisting of their forces, North Las Vegas, and the Pahrump agencies. And then we also have resources coming from Elko County to backfill the area. Law enforcement has been coordinated for the last week to assist Nevada Highway Patrol as well as the other DPS agencies in an effort to control the evacuation effort for a safe and productive egress out of the lake. Currently, NDF has a number of resources. They're going to speak to those specifically. Our law enforcement agencies have been the Nevada Highway Patrol, the State Fire Marshal's Office, the Washoe County Sheriff's Office, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and then Carson City Sheriff's Office successfully doing the evacuation yesterday. We've been co coordinating with the Governor's Office of Energy and the Department of Agriculture in the fuel monitoring in the area to make sure there's plenty of fuel for the evacuees as they come into our area. The Department of Agriculture is also monitoring the grocery stores and the food on the shelves to make sure as people enter the areas we have enough resources. We do have liaison officers, people from our agency and local agencies here in Nevada, embedded both in the California Office of Emergency Services, SOC, their operations center, as well as the incident command post in El Dorado County. They in turn have liaison officers embedded with us. The National Guard from California has one over here with our National Guard. We have a Health and Human Services as well as a Cal OES liaison officer embedded with us from state resources. And then from the local resources, Douglas County and Carson City both have deputies 
embedded with us so we can quickly pull the action point to make evacuations happen when needed. I'm going to turn it over to Major General Barry to update on the National Guard. Thank you, John. Again, uh, Major General Andre Barry, the Adjutant General for the State of Nevada. I also want to thank the Governor again because of his swift actions. We were able to get on top of getting our resources activated as soon as possible. This is really a whole of government approach in terms of bringing the resources around the state, federal, state, and local level. So working together is really critical for an incident like this, and we'll be together through the end. Uh, this is a perfect example of us uh, as a guard unit protecting our homeland, but also neighbors helping neighbors. Uh, currently for the Nevada National Guard, we have 55 personnel who are currently working uh, on state active duty, working multiple shifts. We can double or triple that if we have to and make more available if needed. Our missions right now are traffic control in support of the evacuations. Two helicopters have been activated and one mass unit, modular airborne firefighting system of our C-130s. We are fully integrated with the emergency operations centers and the California Air National Guard uh, doing traffic control points in uh, South Lake Tahoe at this time on the 50 corridor. Our Joint Operations Center is going 24-7 and will be up as long as, as needed. And uh, we are available to work with, uh, with the uh, supporting agencies. The Nevada National Guard is going to be uh, engaged in this process as long as we need to. Uh, we appreciate the support of the other agencies. And we're available to uh, work this incident all the way through. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the NDF, Nevada Division of Forestry, Mr. John Christofferson, to give uh, some updates. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Christofferson. I'm the Deputy Administrator with the Nevada Division of Forestry. And I'd just like to start by uh, <clears throat> saying what a tragic event the, that we're all dealing with here today. And we're sorry when we consider all the loss for, for individuals that this has created. Uh, we thank all the firefighting and law enforcement and other first <coughs> responder assets for, for their engagement in this effort. And we hope that they're able to remain safe throughout the duration of this incident. Uh, the Division of Forestry, as well as many other uh, state, federal, and local government agencies have been planning, training, and preparing for events like this uh, continuously. This is not something that catches us by surprise, as we heard from uh, John Back at all today with emergency management. We all work together uh, to coordinate and share our, our efforts to make sure that uh, we have a comprehensive and holistic uh, response to these kind of incidents. The Division of Forestry has committed uh, multiple of our multiple as assets of ours. The, uh, uh, we have five Type 3 engines committed to the uh, incident. We have 24 20 20-person hand crews uh, assigned to the incident. We're supporting the uh, National Guard's two helicopters that are flying on the incident by supplying helicopter managers for their mission. And overall, we have 130 staff assigned to this fire and additional overhead functioning as liaisons to the incident. Additionally, we've got uh, three 10-person uh, crews with two other 10-person crews on their way to, uh, to support the incident uh, through managing vegetation out ahead of the fire, working with NV Energy to prioritize and identify line clearance and other areas where vegetation can be managed uh, such that it will not burn as intensely and hopefully serve as some sort of uh, barrier and perhaps uh, a situation where uh, control on the fire will be more effectively uh, instituted. We're looking at the feasibility of moving over a mobile kitchen from our wells office in order to feed some of these uh, uh, resources that are working on the fire. Um, and we uh, also uh, have on contract, which we just, I guess, got released from the state of Washington, two super scoopers. Uh, those are the airplanes that we've seen on the news that fly in, scoop water out of the lakes or other water sources and dump the water on the fire. They have, we are working with Cal Fire now, who is the incident manager for the Caldor incident to uh, get those incidents deployed on the fire, or those resources deployed on the fire. Uh, Lake Tahoe, I mean, really is a national model for effective collaboration uh, between agencies. Much of that cooperation occurs in the area of uh, wildland fire fuel management. And uh, to date, uh, from counting back to, say, 19, 20, 20 years ago, uh, 2000, from 2000 to 2020, We've treated over 31,000 acres uh, of hazardous fuels on the Nevada side of the basin. That's federal government, state government, and local government. Um, as this fire and many others continuously show, there's a lot more that needs to be done, a whole lot more. Uh, only two fires in the recorded history have crossed the Sierra from the east to the west, or uh, from west to the east, 
and both of those fires have occurred this year. So this seems to be something like the new norm. These, these kind of incidents are something that we're going to be continually faced with and have to prepare and effectively deal with. Um, there is a need for more aggressive forest management out there on the landscape, an increase in the pace and the scale of our work in order to, to us create more sustainable forest conditions out on the landscape. And that is what our agency is an advocate for, and we will continually uh, work toward with uh, ourselves and our partners through the uh, shared stewardship agreement in order to effectively create a condition that leads to uh, safety for our state's population as well as our natural resources. Thank you. Well, we just, you know, spoke to the, everyone's cooperation. This is a joint effort, and I think uh, it was a conversation that we made it clear that to fight this fire, we're going to use every state resource possible, uh, both Representative Amade and uh, Senator Cortez Masto made it clear that they will do anything they possibly can. I will do anything I possibly can in terms of outreach to other governors. It just was a collaboration of resources and efforts. In a similar vein, have you spoken to Newsom at all and said, what is, what is what's happening? <laughs> I have spoke to Governor Newsom. I called him, and he's called me. We spoke a couple times. Uh, it wasn't what gives. It's okay. We've got a problem on our hands. We're going to deal with it and as best as possible. We have a good relationship in terms of our mutual aid agreements, and we're going to fight this together. Yesterday, yesterday, Cal Fire announced they were bringing in the military. That's other than the National Guard, and does that will that flow over into the state of Nevada, and do you have any idea what they would do? I can't uh, speak specifically to the military. If we, uh, we're going to use every yes that we have. General, I don't know if you have any comments as it relates to that, the military active duty, to bring them in as it relates to that, but we will employ any resources available. For, just for the purposes of Nevada, uh, I told you the number that we're activated, 55 right now, and we could ramp up if we have to. Uh, we're going to take care of Nevada right now. We don't have an agreement at this time. We do have a liaison working in our office from California. So if the need be, and if we needed additional assistance, we have any MAC agreements that we can work through. But at this time, there is no need to have additional military personnel from California. We're okay. If the governor says or we get some uh, questions in terms of giving some additional resources, we can work through that. But right now, we're okay in terms of military personnel for Nevada. Thank you. Other questions? Go ahead, You're talking about as the specific deployment of the assets that we're using now? Thank you for the question. I failed to spell my name because it's not common spelling. Last name is B is in Bravo, A, K, K, E is in Echo, D is in Delta, A, H, L. First name is J, O, N, John. So on that question, we are planning days and up to weeks ahead to make sure we have a coordinated response. We don't want to be playing catch up and not have the resources in place. So the effort that started over a week ago, about 10 days ago, of reaching out across our entire state for all available resources, not only from the local government, but from the federal agencies to see what they could help bring to the area to help support. So we have all of the local resources, not only on this fire, they came off the Tamarack fire, they've come off the Dixie fire. So they're constantly jumping from fire to fire. So we've reached out regionally across the entire state to bring in resources, and because we've done that, we're backfilling those stations around the lake because they are stripped. They've sent their resources for immediate life safety. Now we want to put that second layer in place for life safety, uh, property preservation, as well as safely evacuating people. Can somebody, whoever wants to answer, what is your biggest concern today? Protecting, you know, our structures, our assets, and first and foremost, the people in the state of Nevada and also those in California. Is there a game plan for when we see that evacuation move to the Nevada side? Well, uh, I think that Douglas County was here earlier. They would be ones making the call in terms of a uh, mandatory evacuation, and we will work through the details of the evacuation as we move forward. We've already started. I was impressed with the first group of folks coming out of uh, the Tahoe area, and we're going to continue. Do we know when we should see the fire move to the Nevada side? 
We're hopeful that it doesn't move, but you know, uh, somebody want to address that one? Or we don't have a timeline. These are not predictable to that extent. <laughs> That's correct. Thank you, Governor. So it's called Wildland Fire for a reason. It acts wild. So our initial estimates was it could go this way, or it could go this way, or it could go this way. It moved to all three when the winds picked up over the weekend, and we are in a red flag warning through tomorrow. So the estimate, we don't have a timeline. We are preparing for worst case scenario and getting people out of the area. I think we've got time for a couple more. When we're in the midst of a pandemic. You know, what are the COVID mitigation efforts within the, the evacuation centers? You know, what, what are we doing? What steps are we taking? Next we are continuing our COVID mitigation efforts. We're encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. This is another reason to protect these first responders and the people on the front lines. Uh, the, uh, evacuation centers will be complying with the directives that have been issued by the state regarding wearing masks. Governor, did you personally go up to the fire lines or no? We have a, a visit planned this afternoon. I'm wondering what the status of the casinos are. Are they going to be using casino centers or they just We had Chairman Gibson was also in the meeting. We had, uh, we just wrapped up with. Two of them, I believe, are being used as evacuation uh, sites for folks to go to. Uh, they're still operational as of this minute, but we're playing that on an hour-by-hour -hour basis as well. Is there, uh, usually in times like this is when the scammers come out. Can you think of anything right now that people need to be aware of? Um, you know, I don't know, fire repair places or any of those types of things? Well, I, and that's a good question. I think that will probably come a little bit later after we get through this. Uh, the thing I want people to be aware of is their neighbors. I mean, if you haven't reached out to your neighbors, uh, and you're in this area, please do so. I mean, to make sure that they're okay. Uh, you saw this happen in Louisiana. You're seeing it happen here. Some people are just reluctant to leave their home. Uh, so encourage those that you know that live in the evacuated areas to follow the evacu evacuation orders and everybody be safe as a result of that. But we haven't had any scams thus far. Price gouging is always an issue when you talk about evacuations. Is that something on your radar at this point, or are you uh, considering an executive order about that? Well, price gouging is always an issue when it comes to an emergency, whether that related to COVID. We saw price gouging with water and toilet paper during COVID, you know, and hand sanitizer. Uh, we're aware of that. We hope that good merchants are not going to partake in price gouging. They're going to partake in trying to make their goods available to the widest group of people they possibly can. We haven't seen that this yet, but our eyes are open following that. We'll do one more. No. I want to just emphasize the severity of the fire. You can see I'm standing here, and I'm getting all ash particulates on my jacket even, the black jacket that shows up. So you can see you see them on your black shirt, the same thing. Uh, this is serious, folks. This is extremely serious. We ask everyone to stay in tune, to stay aware of what the best practices are, and to follow our emergency management group so that we can get people out safety, safely rather, protect as many assets as we possibly can. And again, I cannot begin to thank the men and women of the National Guard, our firefighters on the front line, uh, our law enforcement, our first responders, our health care workers, everybody that's associated with the response. The people that are stocking the grocery store shelves, the people that are providing food, everybody that's associated with this has, has done a great job and it just shows you that we as Nevadans step up when our neighbor needs help. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Sorry. <laughs> Just one more question. Um, What's up, the mega? Uh, <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay, I can't address this specifically where it would be coming across if and when it does come across. I don't know if you want to take a stab at that. Or John, or you want to? Thank you, sir. So best estimates are to stay inside of the Tahoe Basin and wrap around the basin, both heading north around the west side and north around the east side. When the winds pick up, it's wild. It changes everything. So we're playing all estimates, all best guesses as to how and when and where it's going to move around the lake if it does and how, when, and where it's going to leave from the lake. We have contingency plans for every one of those areas and resources available to manage it. Thanks. All right. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Everyone.
That was Governor Steve Sisolak and other state officials on the Calder fire. They're saying that at this point they don't know where it's going to go, but the best thing they can do is prepare. So far we know that there are about more than 15,000 firefighters. They have deployed members of the military, and now the governor talking about deploying members of the National Guard to help those on the front line, including firefighters and, for, and um, support staff. They're saying that at this point it's about 16% contained, and they have crews from Utah, Washington, Wisconsin, West Virginia. They also had crews from Louisiana, but they too had to uh, return back to their state because of Hurricane Ida that's currently going on right now. But they said this is a wildfire, and although they have predictions on where this may be, some of those saying that it won't affect the Nevada side. They say once the winds pick up, which are expected in the next couple of days, this fire could go anywhere. So the governor is advising people to look out for your neighbors, make sure they're aware of any updates, make sure that there is no price gouging going on, and to also be aware of any scams that might be happening for those who may um, be faced with home damages or anything like that. Um, and fire officials also telling us today that their main concern right now is to get people evacuated evacuated, get them to safety, and protect as many structures as possible. Be sure to check out this story online at LVRJ.com, and for more information, we will have an update on all of today's events for you this evening at 7 at 7 p.m. Remember, you can also download our free RJ mobile app to get breaking news alerts just like this sent to your phone. And as always, you can find us on Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, and all of your favorite digital platforms. I'm Renee Summerauer. Thank you for watching. You've been watching breaking news from the Las Vegas Review-Journal, sponsored by Michael Gaughan's South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa.